It's my pleasure to introduce you to Vernon M. Keenan, who graduated from Valdosta State University in 1972 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice. He has a Master's degree in Public Administration from Columbus State University. Vernon Keenan is a graduate of the FBI National Academy and the Command College of the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police. Vernon Keenan entered law enforcement in 1972 as a uniformed police officer at the DeKalb County, Georgia Police Department. In 1973, he became a GBI special agent assigned to Northwest Georgia. During his career in the GBI, he has been promoted to every sworn rank in the agency. He was appointed GBI director in January 2003 by Governor Sonny Perdue. As GBI director, Vernon Keenan is responsible for managing a law enforcement agency of 882 employees with a budget of $89.3 million. The GBI is the state investigative agency for Georgia. It is comprised of three divisions, the Georgia Crime Information Center, the Investigative Division, and the State Crime Laboratory. Vernon Keenan has participated in law enforcement exchange programs to Spain, Israel, China, Germany, and the United Kingdom. He serves on several professional working groups at the national level and is a law enforcement lecturer on various public safety issues. Vernon, thank you. The floor is yours. I left my mother in Georgia. I wish she was here to hear that kind introduction. Uh, I went to the university 35 years ago to uh, study to become a history professor. Instead, I went into law enforcement, and uh, my mother believes that someday I'll get out of this foolishness and get a real job teaching in college. In 1993, Dr. Robbie Friedman, who is the director and founder of the Georgia International Law Enforcement Exchange Program, brought myself and nine other Georgia law enforcement leaders to Israel to study with the Israel National Police as we prepared the security plans for the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. During our meetings with the Israel National Police, we received a briefing from one of their counterterrorism experts. This is 1993. And the Israel National Police expert told us that the primary threat to democratic countries was terrorism by radical Islam. The Israel National Police also told us that to prevent terrorism, you must have a robust intelligence system and that the best intelligence information came from local law enforcement officers. Example the Bobby on the street, or the traffic police officer, or the uniformed patrolman on routine patrol, the deputy sheriff executing arrest warrants. In 1996, Colonel David Shure with the Israel National Police came to Georgia. He was later promoted to Major General in the National Police. He came to Georgia to work with Georgia law enforcement as we prepared for the 1996 Olympics. And when he first came to Georgia and met with the planning committee of federal, state, and local law enforcement officers, he asked, who is in charge? And we proceeded to explain to him that there was no one in charge because that is not the way that American law enforcement is organized. Because in the United States, and it's, it's very, it's necessary to understand the program I'm going into, it, to understand that, you must understand how American law enforcement is organized. In America, not only is there a separation of power, there is a decentralization of police authority. There is no federal law enforcement agency. There is no one agency that has authority over all crime matters, over all terrorism issues in the United States. Georgia is uniquely positioned to have moved into programs to combat terrorism after the 9-11 atrocities. Through the Georgia Law Enforcement Exchange Program and Dr. Friedman, we have trained over 270 Georgia law enforcement leaders in Israel. 
the knowledge which we have received from the Israel National Police and from the ICT, and Dr. Ganor has been to, been to Georgia and lectured our officers there, that information prepared us to proceed with plans to establish counterterrorism measures that we would use to defend the citizens in the state of Georgia and our local communities. Look at the makeup of law enforcement in the United States. As you can see, there are nearly there are over 17,000 law enforcement agencies with the number of local officers and state officers. Please understand that each one of those agencies is an independent organization. They are answerable only to their governing, governing authority. The, there's no one at the federal level can, can uh, exercise command and control over local or state law enforcement. And in the state of Georgia, the GBI, the agency that I work with, has the, has the largest authority of any agency in the state, but I have no command and control over any local law enforcement agency. Georgia has a population of 9.4 million. We're the 10th largest, 10th largest state in the nation. We have nearly 600 local law enforcement agencies. And as I stated, these agencies are each independent. This is a number of local officers. The, please, uh, please remember that in the United States, the delivery of police services is by and large done at the local level. It is not, it is not performed by state agencies. It is not performed by the federal agencies. When, when there is an emergency, it is local law enforcement that responds. So the question then becomes this. How, to, how do we create a robust intelligence system to address homeland security issues when we have this large number of independent agencies and we need the information that their individual local officers possess. The answer is this. First off, you begin by educating the local law enforcement officers of the needs for an intelligence system, the needs to why this information is important to combat terrorism. These are the crime statistics for the state of Georgia. It's not something I'm proud of, but it's something we work with every day. So as you can tell from this, the men and women in Georgia law enforcement are working every day just as hard as they can to combat violent crime, to combat, combat uh, property theft crimes. So we have to focus them on the intelligence issues that are, that are necessary to combat terrorism. What we did is after 9-11, Georgia was the fourth state to set up an intelligence fusion center. An intelligence fusion center is very simply, it is multi-law enforcement agencies who combine their resources, who combine their expertise, who combine their information to a central, central unit who has a responsibility to prevent and investigate acts of terrorism. Georgia was a fourth state. Because of the because of the education of the knowledge we had received from the from the Israel National Police and other and other experts in uh, counterterrorism, we were able to put together our plan to set up the Georgia Information Sharing and Analysis Center. This center has been held out as a model project by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and has been earmarked as a best practice by the Governor's Association of the United States. Our homeland security apparatus in Georgia is built, in, built on the following organizational chart. As you can see, GSAC is, is one of the integral parts of that. The mission is this. The center is designed to be the clearinghouse for all information related to terrorism so that the policymakers, so that law enforcement agency heads can have one-stop shopping when it comes to having information which relates to our state. GSAC was created to solve the information problems which have, which have exi previously existed, and local, state, and federal law enforcement were justly Criticized for the failure to commit to connect the dots uh, prior to the 9/11 terrorist attacks. 
The agency, the center is made up of representatives from many different law enforcement agencies across the spectrum of public safety in Georgia. Also, also critical to our center is input and resources provided by the Fire Chiefs Association and the Georgia National Guard. GSAC is divided into four sections. And they, these are self-explanatory. They're the major components of any intelligence center. There are 40 regional and state intelligence fusion centers in the United States. Georgia has one of the best, and uh, a little bit prejudiced, but uh, it is the truth. GSAC is located in the same, mil same building as the FBI and the Joint Terrorism Task Force and the field intelligence groups. This is critical because one of the things I've learned in all my travels across, across the world in dealing with other law enforcement that law enforcement training is accomplished through networking. The exchange of critical information is also accomplished through networking. As you'll notice, we're co-housed co co together. Now, what is interesting here, we have the, we have the absolute best technology. FBI has it. Our agency has it, all the participants here. But the critical exchange of information occurs with the individual agents running up and down the stairs in that building. They don't rely on sending a computer message. They meet personally and they have those discussions. Co being co-housed is extremely important. We exchange information daily. We have built a partnership. The FBI can conduct its database checks through our systems, and we have access to the FBI system, something that is not, this is not routine, this is not a routine practice across the country. The Department of Homeland Security has agents assigned to our center. We also have an exchange program where we send our, our analysts to work with the Department of Homeland Security at their central offices. We operate parallel information flows, but these parallel these parallel um, these parallel lead systems are directly connected with each other. So there's not a break in the information, and if something doesn't fall between the cracks, we also we also routinely rotate analysts in and out of the various sections so that someone doesn't become isolated in their information knowledge. We had such success with bringing local law enforcement into a centralized unit so that we could exchange program, so that we could exchange information. The rank and file men and women assigned to the center launched out on an idea which they, which they developed themselves. It's not something the command staff came up with. They wanted to have, they, they reached out and developed a system where they could deal with their counterparts in the surrounding states. And what began as a ad hoc meeting of uh, like-minded persons is now escalated into a formalized uh, program where they have additional states have joined together and they meet routinely and they exchange information because here again it speaks to the value of networking. We've also developed a system where the men and women assigned to the GSAC have direct contact with their counterparts in surrounding states because, quite frankly, when it becomes necessary to exchange critical information and to do it immediately, that we cannot rely on a command center to do that. What we have now is co personal contacts where we can pick up a phone and talk directly to a counterpart in another state who can make things happen. GTIP. GTIP is a Georgia Terrorism Intelligence Program. It's another way which we bring local law enforcement into the center and we obtain their information. One of the things we found out as we moved into the, the post 9 11 world of, a, of developing an intelligence system was that the largest law enforcement agencies in the state, although they may have an intelligence unit in name, the fact that they, they were unable to deliver that type of information which is necessary to combat counterterrorism. 
So we launched out into a program to take the largest agencies in Georgia and to provide them with resources so that they could establish a robust intelligence system within their individual agencies. And this project works like this. The officers, which is the way it should work, and we learned this from the Israel National Police, the officers report suspicious activity to their agency. That information goes to the intelligence unit at the local agency. It's vetted by them, then is provided to the GSAC, who ensures that all of the federal, all of our federal partners and all of our other state agencies then receive that information. And we track it to make sure that it's handled and that nothing falls between, um, that goes unaddressed. We started out with the largest agency. We've completed that program a year ago. We've now moved into the tier two agencies, which are the next largest law enforcement agencies in the state. They're in the process of being trained now. They have been provided with uniform equipment. They have, it's an extremely expensive proposition to train intelligence analysts and do it correctly. Our tier three is to take all of the multi-jurisdictional drug task forces in the state, provide them with the same type of analytical training, provide them with the same type of uniform equipment, and then tie them into our center. Additionally with this, we have set up, in cooperation with the FBI, we have set up a 1-800 line for local law enforcement officers, a toll-free call center, if you will, for local law enforcement officers, the uh, fire department personnel, and emergency medical technicians. The purpose of this is that we understand that a, that a uh, public safety official in the performance of their duties, routine duties, may run across information which has Homeland Security nexus. We want them to provide that to the center and to do it immediately. They're able to do that through a, a uh, toll-free call, call center. GSAC operates by taking all the information from all, the, all, the, all of our federal partners, all of our state agencies, all of our local law enforcement agencies, and they mesh it into a product which is then shared with all of the different agencies. And I'm not going to th go through the intelligence cycle. That is, uh, most people in here are very familiar with this. The key to the success of GSAC has been that we have set up a system which allows all these independent agencies to come together and to share information and to receive information because they're in the way the American law enforcement is organized, that this is the, we do this through collaboration, we do this through partnerships. There is no mandation of any of this type. It, will not, it is not possible under our, our system of government, and I do not see that changing. But law enforcement knows it must work to combat terrorism, and we will do that through the appropriate partnerships. Thank you.